and welcome to Ask the Expert. Lib is trying to organise my tie and everything I do at the moment. Just, yeah, I've got a... Um, hi, how are you? And hello, Claire Mackay <laughs> from well. Quantum Financial. Award-winning financial planner is our guest expert tonight. Great to see you again. Thanks, and, it's um, lovely being back. Uh, yeah. And look, hopefully you're enjoying the money makeover too. We've covered so much um, all about your goal setting and your budgeting and... We're starting to get into um, how to get the best deals from your bank and your credit card. So there's a lot ahead. And I love the fact that you go using the forum so much uh, because that, I reckon, is such an essential part of the makeover where everyone swaps their ideas and encourages each other to try different things. So thank you to everyone who's participating. So let's get into your questions uh, today and uh, pick Claire's brain which uh, we always love doing here at the, yes, the makeover. Um, first question is, and we've had a lot of questions uh, from participants on this who don't receive a regular wage, small business owners, contractors, even a sheep shearer mm. is, do is doing this course. So a um, lot of work out there and, mm. and the rural community is going all right at the moment. So they have a seasonal income. How can you budget effectively when you don't have regular cash coming in? Well, when there are ups and downs in your income, the key is to know what is your essential costs yep. for that for every month. And when you have a good month, put a, put a bit aside. But this is, I mean, it's also with your income, but it's also seasonal expenses. So you know that your car, rego and insurance all come mm. at one hit. And so putting aside the money to cover that throughout the year is another great way. So both on the income side and on the expenses, yeah. if it's lumpy, trying to build up the, the kitty for when, yep. those, for when those, those lean months on the income and those expensive months on, yep. the, on the expenses. So, so Lib, that, um, what Claire's saying mm. as well is sort of maybe make a bigger emergency fund so you can, you can smooth exactly. out your income. Exactly, you can call it an emergency fund, but with all those kind of uh, separate departments that you put your budget into, you have to be really disciplined to keep it there especially if you're going to have a very up and down income yeah. so it's yeah it really comes back to that self-discipline so it's not going to be a big hit when the car insurance comes in and yeah. rego and i had a very wise mentor when i used to work at fairfax the media group who always and he was a bit crude as journalists are and he used to call it f off money uh, but he said <laughs> always keep four to six months worth of salary just in the bank so if someone asks you to do something that you didn't agree with you can like get me yeah. or in case they told you to yeah. <laughs> she always puts that spin on it in case they told me yes well, exactly right well you've got yeah, yeah, yeah. a contingency plan but well, it has to be just for contingency exactly yeah. all right um <laughs> uh, and Lib would lie awake at night thinking they would tell me to f off too um yeah. our next question another interesting discussion uh from the forums has been offset accounts people want to know is it better to channel extra money into a mortgage offset account or make additional contributions to super? Well, the answer depends on your age. Yep. When you're young, getting rid of that mortgage is super critical. With certainty of 100%, you know what your mortgage is. Yep. With superannuation, it's a long-term investment. And when you're young, you know 9.5% is going into super. As you're getting closer to retirement, you might be thinking maybe we need to, to have a bit more into super because of the tax concessions. But with super, you're exposed to the market. The, you know, we're in a low growth world and there's volatility. Yeah. So my default response is always get rid of the mortgage as quickly as possible. Once you know the date that the mortgage is repaid, then you can start thinking about contributions into super. Yeah. yeah. And, and Lib, um, a lot of people forget that, what, 9.5% yeah. of, yeah. of your salary at the moment goes into superannuation, yeah. anyhow, let alone making extra contributions. Yeah. So it's building up yeah, without exactly. you knowing it. Yeah, exactly, and it's clearly tax effective, but not the best, yeah, for growth, yeah. but yeah. Okay, so if you're young, put it all into your mortgage, get rid of it, and then top up your super as you're getting closer to retirement. Um, another one of our participants wants to know about the pros and cons of using a line of credit instead of a mortgage to buy an investment property. Is that a good strategy? 
Well, it depends on the rates. Yeah. So it's when expensive you expensive lines of credit. Lines of credit are expensive, mm. but so are investment mortgages. So a mortgage against your home will be one rate, but yeah. an investment mortgage, so it's still secured against a property, oh, right. will be a little bit more expensive than it's... And that's only happened in the last 12 months it or has. so, isn't it? as yeah. the banks that have difference. cracked down on investors. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then line of credit may be more expensive again. So it comes right. down to what's the rate. All right, okay. Uh, just do your sums on it. Um, yeah. That's the best yeah. way to do investment it. Investment might be worth it, but yeah. <laughs> maybe not. Um, one lady has, has written in saying she's 61, three adult kids, community aged care worker, earns about 40 grand a year, which just covers their living expenses. She supplements her paycheck with an income stream from super of about $250 a week. She's got 140 grand in super, 18,000 in savings, wants to retire at age 66, doesn't own her own home. Uh, what can she do to make sure she achieves her goals? It's a really tough one, isn't mm, it? Because yeah. low income and also she's running down her super rather than building it up at the moment mm. to retire at age 66. Yeah. Narrowing a gap, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. I think the key thing here is really knowing how much it costs to live. Mm. Because once you no longer have, you've drawn down on your super and you no longer are working with a regular salary, then you are relying on the, the, mm. the Centrelink payments. Yep. And so if you have confidence that you you know exactly how much it costs you to live, then you can start working around, well, how much does that mean you can put aside for rent and things like that? Yeah, yeah. But that, that is a re really tough squeeze. Um, the other thing is, look at other ways to earn extra income, might be right. Like you're, a, you're um, a community aged care worker, which is a wonderful thing to do. The 40 grand and then using the extra 250 out of your super a week you're in a real bind. You've got a double whammy there. So, is there is there a hobby? You is there know, a hobby that you, you can, can turn into yeah. a money maker? Or if you've got a car, you can become an Uber driver. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Or or the other one, which um, a lot of people are doing at the moment, is home delivery yeah. um, of food. Um, there are um, there's one group called Drive Yellow, which I I know is quite big. They're looking for drivers to actually work for everyone from supermarkets to uh, local restaurants. And the pay is actually not too bad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe, maybe looking at an extra casual job to earn the extra income. Talk to your adult kids. Yeah. Can you do it, go into something together? Charge them for babysitting. Well, that's what I was going to say. Because yeah. the industry she's in, you get quite paid quite well with babysitting, um, like through an agency, and she you think she'd be very hireable. Yeah. Plus, if you sort of pick the age group right, you're more or less paid to just relax and watch TV. It's not too hard on somebody that's getting into her sixties. The other thing is that with um, an aging population, companionship. So families yeah. are wanting to look after their elderly parents, yeah. and if that's already your area of expertise, maybe doing some private work as well. And mm. Libby did community nursing yeah. not so long ago. And yeah, but through a private agency. Yeah. And mm. so, yeah, you get, you get paid not too, you know, not too bad doing it through private agencies. And yeah, maybe that can be good extra income to, to supplement there. Um, another question here, wondering how they can go about refinancing their car loan to save on interest and repayments. Is it possible? What are the traps to watch out for? Well, the traps are if you've signed a contract. Yeah. So the exit fees, if you repay it early. Um, so you've got to go through the fine print to see if you stay with the contract, how much it will cost you, and if you refinance or pay it back early, how much will it cost? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just do the numbers there. Alternative financing, like these peer-to-peer um, -peer lending sort of packages can be quite good. Channel 7, uh, the 7 network, has an interest in one called Society One. Mm. And... Uh, um, so I'm declaring any conflicts there, but you know they're worth a worth a look if you want to get rid of a, um, a big credit card debt that you want to consolidate or a personal loan. And you have to go. I mean, the, the beauty of Society One is it's doing the, the culling of quality payers, so you've got to yeah. prove that you can repay the loan as well. Yeah. Um, another question: uh, recommend software packages to help uh, people budget and manage their money. Um, is this a worthwhile investment to? Um, they've seen one twenty dollars a month. Wow, that's actually a lot. Uh, twenty dollars yeah. a month, um, two hundred and forty bucks a year. 
You can get a lot of ones for free. Exactly. Uh, live, there's a good one. That's yeah. Yeah, that's it. The Money Smart program. Um, there's a few other sites here where they'll offer that tool, but you don't have to outlay yeah. an expense for it. And we've got our budget planner as part of the the makeover as anyway, well. That yeah. that's a good one. So start with that. A uh, couple of apps if you if you're tech minded. Pop yeah. a book. Money brilliant. I think that if you're paying for something, you're paying for a convenience. Yeah. So what is it more? What is about that that is mm. different yeah. to the free ones? Yeah. And it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's about being disciplined. And this exactly. is the whole, you only, <laughs> if you use it and it keeps you disciplined, then maybe the money's yeah. worth it. But I personally would prefer to use some of the free ones. Yeah. And, and most of the banks, yeah. you know, go to your, like, your bank's website. Place to start, right? yeah. yeah. Uh, they have some really good ones too. Um, another question, my partner and I each have some personal debt. We're currently renting, but would like to buy our own home. I'm working part time. Are we better off to pay our debt out, then save the money? for our home deposit, or do we save for our deposit at the same time as managing our debt? I'm very conservative on this. I'd say pay your debt. Pay the debt. Pay the debt. Yeah. You're getting 25 to 3% in savings, and yeah. you're paying more on your debt. You know, if it's a personal loan, you could be paying up to 15%, so yeah. pay the debt. If you're paying your debt and you are paying 15%, that's like a tax-free 15% return you're getting on your money. Yeah. Now, I don't reckon you can get that anywhere at the no. moment, no. So and it's, it's absolutely nice. guaranteed. Um, my partner and I have a couple of personal debts, credit cards, car loan, personal loan. We struggle to keep tra track of them. Um, is it a good idea to consolidate and take out just one loan and consolidate them both, if you uh, can. all of them? If you yeah. can and you can get a better rate. If not, if your situation is such that you you can't refinance them into, into a consolidated loan, then have a plan around paying most expensive one down as quickly as possible yeah. and just create a waterfall of mm. just paying them down as Good quickly idea. as possible. But yeah. it's great if you can consolidate them. The key for this family though is making sure you don't increase your debt amount. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Because often the financial institution will say, and depending on the character of the financial mm. institution, to put it kindly, uh, will say, yet yeah, we can consolidate your debt. Do you want a bit more? Mm. Wow. Or oh, you, yeah, yeah, that trap. At yeah. a low rate for the consolidated amount and anything else you add on to it at a ridiculously high rate. Yeah. So yeah. You yeah. really look at that case yeah. and, and, that and just numbers. focus on getting rid of it. Just having a plan and saying, we're not going to weed out, we're not going to get any takeaway for three months and we're just going to put that money and physically what you would pay to, to go out, stick it in a jar yeah. or a separate account and do it at the time. Yeah. So you really got to get on top of it. Same with refinancing to pay off the credit card. This question, two credit cards, $30,000 in debt, tried to consolidate, but have been knocked back. Um, uh, is there any other way I can, do I, do I re put it into my home loan? If you've got a home loan, arguably you could, because it'll be a lower rate, but the discipline of paying it back you know, so you could just keep adding everything to your home loan, yeah. Yeah. and that's not cool. That is, you know, debt is, you know, this sort of debt is not cool debt. It is debt that is dragging you down, and it's not building your wealth. Yeah. So, if you decide to put it against your mortgage because it's a lower rate, then you have to be really disciplined that you know exactly when that's going to be paid. Yeah, and also because there's a longer payoff on your mortgage, if you if you say put ten grand on your mortgage at a lower rate. You've got to actually say, I'm going to set my, myself six months to pay off that 10 grand. Plus the other repayments on your mortgage that you were already Yes, don't just think of it as just yeah. the same old mortgage repayment. No. You never get anywhere. You've got to add the extra. Yeah. Because if you add that 10 grand to a 30 year mortgage, at the end of 30 years, it's cost you a fortune. Mm. So you've got to say, right, this is going to get me out of trouble for a short period of time. Guarantee that I'm going to pay it off. Yeah. Um, Everyone says that um, the next interest rate move will be up. Not sure about that. Um, we don't have too much room in the budget for higher interest rates. Is it a good time to lock in the mortgage? Then we do both. Don't exactly, exactly. I mean, I always think of it as like a gamble. I mean, this whole interest rate question, it's always a bit of a gamble. Is it going to go up or someone said this or whatever? So if you have a bit locked in and a bit variable, you're hedging your bets. Mm. So we've... T we Pretty much have always had that strategy, haven't we? Not for everyone, but it depends on your circumstances. 
with this family though, if they're close to the limit and if any movement in interest rates going up is going to hurt, yeah. then the other thing you really need to do is look at your budget, look at what yeah. you're spending the money on because I can guarantee you over 30 years, mm. interest rates will go up and they might go down. Yeah. So you need to be confident that you're not going to be stressed at the time mm. that um, the interest rates do move. Yeah, yeah. And just on the interest rate front, um, yeah, we talk, talk about today and it's what we do at the Money Makeover, keep you right up to date. Um, the thought was that we would have interest rates at this level for, for quite some time. Now all of a sudden you've got the Australian dollar going up and that's hurting, going to hurt the economy, it's going to hurt our exporters. So the Reserve Bank, if inflation stays low, with the new inflation figures coming out, I think in the next day or so, um, or early next week, the Reserve Bank may be interested in cutting official interest rates to drag the dollar down. Um, and that sounds great. The problem is that the banks may or may not uh, yeah. pass it down to us. <laughs> pass it through. Can't use that excuse again if anyone from a bank is watching. Um, uh, final question, we're looking to refinance our $350,000 mortgage. Uh, have been offered a lower rate from the local credit union, but we're gonna have to pay mortgage insurance. Is it going to be worth it? And also have to pay exit fees. Exit fees, yeah. It's doing the sums. Don't do your sums, yeah, because it may not be worth it with the extra payments and just for a little bit of change in interest rate. Might take t so many years to try and e equal that all out. Well, that's just it. Do the numbers. What yeah. are the costs of changing and what's yeah. the payback period? Yeah. When does it become you're actually in a better position? Mm. And have you rung your bank and asked for a discount? Mm. You know, um, in previous money makeovers, We've had virtually everyone that's run their, run their bank that's right. and said, give me a discount. I think the biggest is 0.7% wow. uh, from, and the lady mm. basically rang us up and said, I can't believe they gave me 0.7% just because you, you told me to ring. No, she wasn't surprised that my advice was good. <laughs> but uh, I didn't <laughs> say every word in my mouth. Anyhow, I'm just saying, uh, but the key thing is, if you don't work. ask, you don't get. Exactly. exactly so right. what's the harm in exactly. asking? Hey, the other thing while you're here, budget coming up, all this talk from both parties of cracking down on the tax concessions for super contributions on those who are earning over one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Should you make your contribution before budget night on May the third? Bring it forward rather than leave if it you've for got June. the money and you were planning to make the contribution anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. do it before the third of May. Makes sense. Right. You've got you know we've got eight weeks after to, before the end of the financial year, so you might need to also readjust your strategy once we know what's coming right, into the budget. Can't hurt to right. get on it, quickly. It's unlikely they would do it straight away. Yeah. But they're politicians, <laughs> so you just. I've seen it done before where yes. everyone says, oh, no, they wouldn't do it straight away. And all of a sudden, boom, they do it that yep. night. So mm -hmm. just a bit of safety. If, if you were going to do it early and you're in that position, or if you're going to do it anyway and you're in that position, maybe look at doing it early. Mm -hmm. Claire, good to see you. It's been fun. Always terrific Always to have you, as, have you. Yeah. as our Ask the Expert. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Enjoy the weekend. We'll catch you Monday.